Throughout the month of February in 2025, there's an unique celestial event that's currently in progress called a planetary parade, where all of the planets can be visible in the night sky right after sunset. And tonight I'm going to be photographing one of these planets. This is a planet that I've photographed once before, and it was recently involved in two events that occurred last January. And I wanted to grab a photo of it before it fades away for the next couple of years. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit the planet Mars. My name is Kwesi Kwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Named after the Roman god of war, Mars is the fourth planet in our solar system. It's also referred to as the red planet, as the effects of iron oxide on the surface gives the planet its reddish color. Mars is the site of Olympus Mons and Vallis Marineris which are the tallest mountain and largest canyon in the solar system, respectively. Mars also has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, meaning fear and terror, respectively. The moons are small and irregular shaped and are believed to be asteroids that were captured by the planet's gravity. Mars has also been called a spacecraft junkyard, as numerous missions have explored the planet. Some of the first probes to be sent were Mariner 4 in 1964, and Viking 1 and Viking 2 in 1975. This was later followed up by the first rovers that include Sojourner in 1997, Spirit and Opportunity in 2004, and Curiosity in 2011. In July of 2020, NASA launched the latest rover named Perseverance, which landed on Mars in February 2021. So to photograph the red planet, I'll be using my schmidt cassegrain telescope the Celestron Edge HD 9.25. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color planetary webcam, the ZWO ASI 224 MC. And as per usual, this will be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And attached to the barrel of the camera, I'll be using the Optolong UV IR cut filter to help with the sharpening and contrast details. All right, so with all that being said, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the planet Mars. The winter 2025 season has been pretty brutal in Maryland. We had a lot of snow, freezing rain, and clouds in January and parts of early February. 
Thankfully, everything has cleared up now, so I'm out in the Astro Park inside of Fire Capture, and my imaging session for the planet Mars is now in progress. So you can clearly see the planet in the center of the frame, and I'm able to make out a couple of planetary features. I can see part of the northern polar ice cap at the top, which is composed mainly of frozen carbon dioxide. And I can also see some of the dark planitia fields on the surface, which I think is pretty neat. So as I mentioned earlier, there were two events that involved Mars back in January. The first event on January 13th was the occultation event between the moon and Mars. So Mars actually went behind the moon at one point and then emerged on the opposite end about an hour later. And the second event on January 15th was the opposition event for Mars. So on that night, Mars was at its closest distance to Earth, shining at its largest and brightest. And the interesting thing about Mars is that its opposition occurs once every two years. So after this year, we won't see Mars until sometime in 2027. So be sure to check out the planet while it's still available. But apart from that, everything is going pretty smoothly so far. The scene conditions are actually pretty good, so I'm using a three times Barlow lens tonight to get up and close to the planet to see if I can reveal as much planetary detail as possible. So I'll continue to monitor the imaging session, and as always, we'll just see how the night progresses. Okay, so here's a quick update for all of you. It's a little after 11.30 and I did a quick focus check as well as retuned the ADC. And now I'm back on Mars taking my video captures. So I wanna talk about a really cool experiment that you can try for yourself at home. And the best part about this, there's no telescope required, just your own eyes. Take a look at this. In the summer of 2020, we could see Saturn near the constellation of Sagittarius. However, fast forward a few years to the summer of 2024, and now we can see Saturn near the constellation of Aquarius. Why is that? When the ancient Greek astronomers were observing the night sky, they noticed specific points of light that moved back and forth relative to the stars which were fixed in their positions. And these wandering points of light were the planets in our solar system. The word planet comes from the Greek word planati, which means wanderer. So these points of light were wandering bodies that moved across the night sky. Now, although all of the objects in our universe move at different rates of speed, with the deep space objects, they seem to appear fixed in their location from our point of view, since they're so far away from us. And we can locate them using the right ascension and declination celestial coordinates. However, with the planets, since they're closer to us, astronomically speaking, we're able to see their relative motions a little bit easier. Let's use the planet Mars as an example. In 2025, Mars can be seen near the constellation of Gemini. And if we rewind a little bit to the fall of 2024, we can see Mars moving past Gemini 
from Castor to Pollux, from right to left. Then in December, there seems to be a point where the planet remains stationary, and in January, it moves in the reverse direction, traversing Pollux and Castor from left to right. This phenomenon where the planet moves in the reverse direction is known as retrograde. So if you have a good stretch of clear skies in your forecast, I would encourage you to try this experiment for yourself to observe the planetary motions as well as their retrograde motions. You can do short-term observations with the inner planets of Mercury, Venus, and Mars, or you can try your hand at some long-term observations with the outer planets of Jupiter and Saturn. Whichever one you decide to do, I hope you'll have a deeper understanding and appreciation for the orbital mechanics in our universe. Hey everyone, so I was able to successfully complete my data capture for this evening. I was able to grab several video files of Mars and I'll sort through all the data to see which file has the most stable seeing conditions and I'll use that to create the final image. It was a lot of fun to observe and image Mars once again as well as have the opportunity to view the planetary parade. Now, although the best time to see the parade is in February, it should still be visible in the early parts of March. It might be a bit tricky to see Venus and Saturn since they're getting pretty close to the sun, but the remaining planets should still be visible. So if you have the opportunity to see it, I would highly encourage you to try it for yourself. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy my processed image of the planet Mars at the end of this video. And until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies. <laughs>